<laughs> Welcome to the show. I'm James. I'm David. I'm Riley. And today we are discussing the 2012 James Bond film Skyfall. Ooh. Skyfall. Skyfall. We'll laugh. We'll argue. We might get a little too into it because David's a huge Bond nut. But at the end of the day, they're just movies. And spoiler alert for anyone who's never seen a Bond movie before. What a missed opportunity. Guns are fired. Spoiler alert. What? Spoiler alert. Spoiler what? alert. Yeah, you're right. I oh, totally, I totally should have done that. David. I didn't you're even so know right. what you were doing for a second there, but I wow, know. what a payoff! <laughs> Spoiler alert! Ba, 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 ba. All right, and if you're part of our group of listeners who watched the movies ahead of time, next week we are doing <gasps> Denis Villeneuve's Arrival. Ooh. Finally, Road to Dune, baby. Dune's coming in October on Arrakis. On the yeah, I hope you like Not sci-fi. Yet. We will though eventually. Arrival's a great film. It is. Uh, but today, spoiler, it's another right? great film. Spoiler for my take on this. It's Skyfall. David, what are you giving this movie out of 10? Al- although its runtime and plot holes dampen repeat viewing, a strong villain and actual personal stakes go a long way. There's never been a James Bond so stunning. 8.4 out of 10. Oh. I like point- this movie. Yeah, you liked Casino Royale better. I love Casino Royale. That's interesting. I think that Casino Royale is gets the actual feeling of Bond better. This tries harder to modernize a lot of Bond things. Like, mm. even... We'll, we'll get into it. We but. will. We will. Riley, what do you okay. got for us? I think I actually didn't finish writing my slogan, but here's what I got <laughs> so far. You might think the title is a metaphor for an apocalyptic ending to the traditional Bond mythos, but Skyfall actually re- represents a return to form for the franchise. And then I guess I was going to say something like, and it's it's pretty good <laughs> or something. I'm giving it a 7.5 out of 10. Um, and I feel like, am I allowed to do this? I want to downgrade my Casino Royale score because that was, we did that, what, a, a year ago? About a year ago. It's been a while. I've learned more about how I'm rating these movies, and I gave Casino Royale a seven, and I want to I, I wanna bump this one up. I was going to give this a seven, and I'm like, yeah. that's not right. I like this better. So I'm going to put Casino Royale down to 6.75 and this one up to 7.5. I liked it. Whatever you want, man. Yeah. I liked it more than I thought I would. You make the rules. Yeah. I don't love Bond. <laughs> what about you, James? <laughs> I feel a strong Bond. Uh, <laughs> out of out of all two James Bond movies I've seen, <laughs> this one is by far the best. Wait, what? I liked it more than Casino Royale. You've only seen you've never seen any Bond movies? N- not like in full. Like Yeah, you probably had like Golden Eye in the background sometimes. You know, when I was a kid, I think around Christmas, there was a channel on cable that just had twenty four hour bond. I saw snippets here and there. Yeah. You didn't see Pierce Brosnan, and we're like, "Whoa, I need I to th- see some of that." Which the what's after? Uh, yeah. Tomorrow never dies. I saw Tomorrow Never Dies, but again, I was like eleven or something. Like, no. Holy doesn't ma- count. Um, well. But this movie, and I have to disclose, I was enhanced. <laughs> but I, <laughs> I was like nine point five. Wow. Yeah. Uh, for at least the first half of this movie was yeah. like wow. So I'm giving this an eight point two five. Oh yeah, I man. really like this. movie. It's a really good movie. Is this the first one? Since Casino Royale is the direct sequel to that, no. or was there yeah, one Quantum between? of Solace, the one no uh, one likes? Yeah, and it's Quantum of Solace is better than everyone remembers, but it's still bad. It was ri- it was made during the writer strike, and so Daniel Craig ended up writing a lot of the movie. Sorry, Daniel, I <laughs> yeah. take it back. I like you. <laughs> and so it's just a bit of a mess of a movie. It's really short, but it feels really long, and like it's one of those movies where. Uh, things happen too fast where you don't have time to process it and you're like yeah. what's going on they what? nailed the on? processing time in this one I it's had awesome. lots of time to do the did thinking did you say Daniel Craig wrote some of the movie what of, Christine, of Quantum of Solace how because he with was with a computer probably well he, he literally <laughs> did, like he, he, he was he, he got was, a script writing credit uh, I, I'm not 100% sure. Or they sure. just showed up on set and they're just like, go, shoot some stuff. Okay. Apparently it was quite a mess. We're not talking know. about QOS today. We're <laughs> talking about Skyfall right after this message from our sponsor, Manscaped. The best in below the belt grooming for men. Manscaped <laughs> offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels, including their fourth generation trimmer, the Lawnmower 4.0. Its new wireless charging system removes the need to bring cables with you, and it's compatible with most Qi charging pads. The Lawnmower 4.0 includes ceramic blades with skin safe tech, reducing nicks and cuts. It's cordless, waterproof, and gets 90 minutes of use on a full charge. So head to manscaped.com slash carpool20 and get 20% off and free shipping. And that's right, our sponsor codes don't have our new name in them yet. We're working on it. It's coming. Cereal is great, but it's full of sugar and junk that you shouldn't eat. Magic Spoon. Uh huh. It's changing that with their healthy yet delicious cereals. Full of magic. Zero grams of sugar, 14 grams of protein, and only four net cr- grams of carbs in each serving. And only 140 calories. And let me give you a personal anecdote. I hate giving junk to my kid, but that's all she wants to eat. She's two. You know what? With Magic Spoon, they have things that look like Fruit Loops, but don't even contain sugar. It's so sick. That's crazy. 
Yes, so get it. They also have like, uh, there's like a maple flavor now and cookies and cream and all sorts of fun stuff. So head to uh, their website and get five bucks off using the code, you guessed it, carpool. <laughs> yeah. I need to try the maple. I got so mad when someone asked if they could have one of our boxes. I got like, I drove here faster to make sure they didn't get a box. <laughs> That's right, I love it. It's just so rude, dude. I was not <laughs> Let cool. them try it. No. They're not sure. Yeah, we are. Thanks to Arazi for sponsoring today's video. Arazi wants to help you protect your privacy with their new Okio True Privacy webcams. Take privacy into your own hands with the included magnetic lens cover and use the front switch to turn off the electrical circuit to the webcam's microphones, ensuring you're only seen and heard when you want to be, baby. It features autofocus and light correction and films 1080p resolution at 30 frames per second. There's even a version with an included light ring. So get your Okio True Privacy webcam today using the link in the video description. Okio. It sounds Italian, but they're Swedish. Oh, they are? Oh. I think. Oh. Or, or Swiss. Meatball cam. Pretty sure it's Swedish. I don't know. <laughs> All right, where to start, guys? Oh, how about the start of the movie? Oh, let's oh. do it. Yeah, okay. Here we go. In Istanbul. Formerly Constantinople. Constantinople. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> James Bond tries to recover a hard drive with a list of stolen agents from the mercenary Patrice, but on M's orders, Agent Eve Moneypenny sh tries to Did shoot- Did you say they were stolen agents? A list of stolen agents. A stolen list, list of, of agents. agents. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Okay. They got a, the agents, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> a stolen list of agents from the mercenary Patrice. But on M's orders, Agent Eve Moneypenny tries to shoot Patrice, hitting Bond instead, who falls in a river and is presumed dead. Three months later, M is pressured to retire by Gareth Mallory, head of a government oversight committee, before MI6's servers are hacked and its headquarters explodes. Bond learns of the attack and returns to London, where he fails a series of physical, medical, and psychological tests, but M tells him he passed and orders him to recover the hard drive. MI6's new quartermaster, Q, equips Bond with a radio beacon and a classic Walter PPK. Ooh, that's a quintessential Bond gun. Elegant, Timeless and deadly, a first-class firearm. It will kill bad guys dead, assuming Bond can hit them, of course. You guys are supposed to have stopped me by now. <laughs> After finding and killing Patrice, Bond is led to Macau, where he is approached by Severin. A uh, huh? Pretty good? No. No. <laughs> Severin. Severin, no? Severin. <laughs> a former sex slave employed by a bad man. Promising to free her, Bond boards her yacht and sneaks naked into her shower. Hashtag romantic. <laughs> they arrive at the abandoned island of the bad man, revealed to be former MI6 agent Raul Silva, who resents M for allowing his capture and subsequent torture. Silva kills Seren before MI6 re reinforcements arrive and arrest him. At MI6's new underground base, Q attempts to decrypt Silva's laptop, but it hacks MI6 again and Silva escapes, attacking M at her parliamentary inquiry, but he's thwarted by Bond, Moneypenny, and Mallory. Bond and M decide to lay a trap for Silva at his childhood home, a Scottish manor called Skyfall! Skyfall. With Skyfall's gamekeeper, Kincaid, Bond and M fight Silva's mercenaries with booby traps and antique rifles, but M is wounded and retreats to a nearby chapel while Blonde bows up, blows up the house. You call him Blonde? <laughs> He's blonde. I'm having trouble here. I'm Bond, blonde. <laughs> Bond blows up the house with propane tanks. At the chapel, Silva confronts M, forcing his gun into her hand and begging her to kill them both. But Bond arrives and kills Silva with a knife, his father's hunting knife, in fact, thrown to the back, which I just realized might be symbolic. M then succumbs to her wounds, dying in Bond's arms. After M's funeral, Moneypenny becomes secretary to Mallory, the newly appointed M, who tells Bond, <laughs> it's time to get back to work. Oh yeah. yeah, that's a oh, Bond movie. Yeah. Yeah. That, I gotta say that as a Bond fan, that is a sick ending. That's like a oh, we're going back to tradition. Well, okay, yeah. can you explain what that means to me? Because I am aware of the name Money Penny. I actually thought M and Money Penny was the same thing. No, no. <laughs> uh, so Money Penny is the secretary. Um, yeah. and she's been there since the beginning. Uh, and M is always the person that hands him the mission. And so, like Judy Dench was M, but this is like a nice little. I think it's a pretty neat handoff, but. Kind of an interesting, like, and that's why I said in my slogan, it's like a return to form yeah. because when the Daniel Craig uh, run started, a lot of these, like, familiar Bond elements weren't there. There's mm -hmm. no Q. M was a woman this time. Yeah. There was no Money Penny. He didn't have a ton of crazy gadgets and stuff. Uh, so now this is sort of being like, all right, we got an old man, M, again. We got Money Penny. We got Q giving him gadgets. But Money, Money Penny now is an agent, not no, just. She, but no, she's retired from the field. She's now just a. Well, uh, Desk. Yeah. Uh, she's a desk okay, so game. when she said, I'm helping with Mallory with the transition and then I'll return to the field. She, yeah. 
I mean, in the old one, she was just a secretary. Yeah, she's just secretary. But yeah. this one, she might return the field. But yeah. yeah. I but mean, uh, I think another big thing that's that's cool about it is that the modern Bonds have felt the need to like not have a formula or not not follow as close to the formula where it's like okay, cold open that's totally unrelated, and then go back to the office and then like have a meeting with them in his office, like with a with a meeting. And, like there's kind of a pacing to it. And this was like, hey, here's the visual of that. We're going to return to like James Bond not going off the deep end, not being like a, a rogue agent doing his own thing. He's like, no, now he's going back to the agency. He's got an M. He does these appointments. He right. does it. And he cares more about man than mission. Yes. One of the first interactions is him and that agent who ultimately dies when he wants mm. to stay and tend to his yep. wounds at least a bit. Ronson. But then M is like, no, you need to go leave him. Yeah, I love that that moment. And that dynamic that they yeah. set up for the whole film. I think the movie's really good at those really quick character building moments of like just really small snippets that like could pass by and just be like part of the action or whatever. But it's like, no, they're really and telling you about it. super, him. super integrated. Super well integrated. Super integrated. It's like they set that up at the beginning and then the entire storyline, the entire dynamic between Silva, the villain, and M and Bond is all part of that thing that yep. happens in the first 30 seconds. Yep. That is so cool. Yeah, I, I might I, give. I might have my rating of this guy. Here yeah. It's a great movie. It's, I just I go in. I don't like Bond. You mm. know. I think that this is the one that stands the most apart from Bond. What, there was a Bond between this movie and the next one, Spectre. So there's the Casino Royale, and this are the good good Bond, Daniel Craig Bonds, and then the one after that are too close to the one right before it, and it has like none of the energy. Yeah. So Quantum of Souls is too close to Casino. Spectre is way too close to Skyfall, but it gets none of the energy. Right, it's the same director. Uh, but oh, it's really? Just, Sam it's just, it's just he made American Beauty, right? Yeah, and he's and a great director. Clear, I mean, like clearly Skyfall, he does an incredible job. But you can just tell he just doesn't give as much of a fuck on the second second go around. How could you? You couldn't. He puts <laughs> he puts he puts so many fucks into this. <laughs> yeah, he, he seems can like no kinda... longer dredge any fucks from Give a Fuck Bay. Exactly. <laughs> he, I, I mean, I don't know much about Sam Mendes. I only know that he's done a bunch of horror. 1930, and, 1917. And then he did a bunch of. Oh, he did Sam. 1917. See, well, who is this guy? He does like horror movies. He's famous for horror movies, and then did Spider Man, right? That's Sam Mendes. No, no, not Sam Raimi. Oh, Sam. Yeah, I wish that'd be a that's sick who Evil Dead and Spider Man. It's all yeah, Sam Raimi is different. Somebody, person. whoever was listening to this podcast, just there knowing who <laughs> the, the hair. Are. There's so much hair in people's like, paws right now. What are you right talking now, about? Yeah, I was like, I didn't know he did horror stuff. That's cool. yeah. No, sorry, I, I'm completely have no idea what I'm talking about. But yeah, I think that, like you said, James, this movie is so tightly integrated. Even the fact that they go out of their way to give Bond an arc <laughs> in this, and but like it all fits within the kind of theme of like past versus present. But like. That's his personal struggle too. Is like, how is he gonna fit? What you, What do you think that arc is? Because I could kind of see it at the beginning. I had a sense of like where this is going, and there's all the like you said, the past versus present themes are throughout. Like the fact that Q is a very is a younger man mm -hmm. who is all tech. Uh, yeah, that was a great juxtaposition. Um, but dialogue and and the villain as well. The villain is like a better Bond. He's like Bond, but also a hacker and is freer than Bond. Yeah. Doesn't play by the same rules as Bond, so he's kind of like Bane in that way. He's both. He's like a hybrid of Bane and Joker. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. <laughs> uh, that, he was an awesome foil to Bond. He was so but good. where do you see the end of Bond's arc? I being? think it's not neatly all the way throughout the movie. I think it is heavy at the beginning where it's like he gives up and he's like, I'm just going to live my life and do this thing. But you can see it in him that he's not satisfied. He he needs more. He's, he's unfulfilled. And so he his arc is like, is what, what are the three levers that you talk about all the uh, time? There's a uh, competence, likability, and proactivity. So I think it's proactivity that they're pulling on at the beginning. That's the big part of his arc. And I think he's not... Well, he loses competence when he gets injured. Yeah, you're right. That loses competence. So they're playing with both. But I think that like more than necessarily there being a big arc, the movie goes out of its way to give you signposts of his arcs, like the visual of him getting the the past out of him, getting the, the bullet shards out of him, or mm. shaving his face to like be like... Because like, he's been rough and tough bombed with the, the stubble the whole time. And then they're like... Okay, at this point, he's now fully committed to MI6. He's fully committed to the mission. We're going to shave him, give you classic Bond. And so I feel like the movie okay, is yeah. trying to give you that visual. Yeah, proactivity. Like, he's commit he's gone back to the headquarters, yeah. even though he didn't have to, yep. and he's committing to it. That yeah. makes See, sense. I loved all of that stuff, and I feel like it, it kind of, the movie taking a look at Bond and being like, all right, this is kind of an old-fashioned way of doing things. He's got this, like, history, and do how much do we value that versus the new stuff that's happening, and society is changing. But I think the thing that, like, I, it's hard for me to take that and really appreciate it because Bond is like really set up as this like episodic cartoon, you know, daily ep episode of the week type of situation. And so it always needs in in some form or another, it needs to come back to the status quo. And it's just like, I, w I wish that this could be, I wish that there could be like a trilogy of 
you know, More James continuity. Bond, the end of James Bond, and then like what's next for MI6 00 series or whatever. I think that they've tried to move towards that. Maybe in, that's what this uh, upcoming Daniel, one is. Well, I think that's like what the Daniel Craig series has been, certainly more than the other ones. And I think that's part of the era of uh, like limited series and kind of ca- like cable, um, where it's more, we can't just have the weekly episode stuff. You need continuity, you need the serialized right. content. And I think they are trying to serialize Bond. Like, they're, they're, even the fact that like, Daniel Craig's second movie is very much a sequel to the first one and the fourth is very much a sequel to the third like I think they are doing that but they're they aren't fully committed where they do hit the reset button still and they're like ooh, I don't know if like people didn't like that one so we got to like reset a little bit yeah they're also you know it's a little different because they're spread out right Mm. and they also they have different people involved all the time right yeah they, they carry over a lot of the same people like even between different bonds, it'll be a lot of the same crew and a lot of the same production. Like it's the yeah. same producers. What about like? Oh, it is the same producers. The same producers. So there's like a yeah, Barbara, kind of a consistent... Barbara Broccoli and Michael G. Wilson. Basically. Broccoli, hey, Barbara Broccoli. That's, so, broccoli. Um, that's the daughter <laughs> of so the guy. Money Penny. It sounds like, first, a, like a character in a treehouse. Uh, the first, cartoon. the first producer on the the original Bond movies was Cubby Broccoli. Uh, and so Barbara Broccoli, I believe, is his daughter. Broccoli is a is a last name you're telling. Yes, me. Copy Broccoli wow. sounds like something forgotten and left her. Room. Oh no, it spells now. <laughs> anybody, Broccoli. If anybody's listening whose last name is Broccoli, get at us on Twitter or leave a comment or something. Let or us if know. your first name is is Cubby, yeah. let us know you're real. Too. But uh, you're not just a Veggie Tales character. But ask my hubby, Cubby. <laughs> hubby, Cubby. I want to talk about the style of this movie because I mm. think that that is one of the things that's incredible about this. Roger Deakin, so guy who did Blade yeah. Runner 2049. This movie oh, wow. looks incredible it does i think i think the mo- the one shot that i remembered uh was those like scottish highlands when mm. they're like driving out to skyfall i was like this is this scotland this like i've never been there mm. but like the the road that they were driving on it was just so picturesque i had the same thing yeah. i was like is that the highlands is that what that looks like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I, yeah i was struck by the opening image mm. it's just that hallway oh and yeah. then oh man <laughs> this movie I hate having kids sleeping and stuff like that it was just <laughs> silent and then like Bond silhouette like <laughs> shoots around the corners <laughs> yeah. and it just sounded awesome but I'm just like hit the remote yeah. down I know <laughs> the same thing well, man. I, yeah, so I think that's something that's really cool where I want to get back on the style but this is I guess sort of t- related to style the, this movie goes out of its way to modernize James Bond like iconography where in every James Bond movie there's always the gun barrel sequence where like the the, he turns and points his gun at the audience and shoots it and the blood goes down. Yeah. And I think that opening shot is sort of like the equivalent of that without being so tacky. Right, because they put that at the end of the movie, yeah. but they have like a surrogate for it at the beginning. Exactly. And it totally, yeah, it was. It, it totally works. It works, but it's like him pointing the gun at the screen and you're like, but I like this. Yeah. I like and, this much And then more. the opening, the opening, what do you call that? Like that theme, opening credits, kind yeah, of yeah, theme yeah. they play the song and everything. The Bond song? Yeah, the, the visuals... Yeah we're good i usually they're kind of cringe i don't like them very much but this one was oh, you're like, talking like the like title sequence with like yeah. skyfall yeah. Or, what do you yeah, call when that his feet are going the title toward, sequence. when his the feet are going towards song? that hole and then like a big hand pulls him down oh. like, that was pretty uh, cool yeah sure. i was like okay yeah we're fully into the title yeah. sequence. and then it felt like adele was the best modern artist to oh yeah to cover that oh it's, it's just like she was hand no and easily yeah. top three bond songs of all time it's so good Bravo. yeah the little meh no. <laughs> but I'm surprised because often these title sequences look really good when they come out and then they age really poorly where like it's just like the, the computer graphics that they're using just look silly. But this one looks amazing. Oh, it, look, yeah, it still looks okay. You can still tell like, it would yeah. be better today, but it's still okay. And the subject matter is cool too. My yeah. favorite parts being when his body's getting pulled down by a the, bigger hand. Yeah. And then even by the time I was bored of it later on, three or four <laughs> minutes later, you're going into like the grave of James yeah. Bond. It was, mm. and, and this is all coming seconds after he actually got shot. Like when yeah. Money Penny actually shot yeah. him, I was like, no, oh, yeah. like really? <laughs> it was a sick shot too. When he's like the first shot when he's on the train and he's fighting and it's like the, you're the camera is running perpendicular to the train. <laughs> <laughs> but it's tracking with the train. It's tracking with the train, and then he gets shot, and then like gets launched off the train and starts falling. That first shot, I'm like, he's fucking dead. Yeah, also he's fucking. He fully looks like dead. a corpse, and he falls yeah. so far. Yeah. And then, also, then there's the wait. wide shot that's good too. But it's that first shot. The impact is so real. And we're it's back true. to cinematography, baby. Yeah. Look true. how good we are. Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, it, it is a great shot. But I was, I think I was like, wait, what kind of rifle is she packing here? Like, it's it's. It flies like, him off the train. Like, yeah, it's some huge caliber bullet. No, it was just a regular assault rifle. No, it wasn't. Yeah, it was. It was, like it was like an M16 or something. She just makes it look really light. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Sure, yeah. Sure, Have sure, you seen sure. her? Pipe. Yeah, I like... <laughs> let's talk about that first chase sequence because I think it's really intense and cool in a fun way. And yeah. like again, like little character things that demonstrate what kind of bond he is. Like 
it, the, the guy decouples the train and he takes the backhoe and hooks it on yeah, yeah, with yeah. like the scoop and holds on and pulls his train closer and then runs and jumps off. I'm like, that's this bond. That, that was Daniel. sweet. Fucking You're awesome. gonna like this, David. There was a moment the guy he was chasing. I was almost sad to see that guy go because he was a badass. Yeah. What's his name against the P? Patrice. Uh, yeah, Patrice. There's a moment where Patrice like jumps off a bridge onto the train, and I I literally said a lot of like. This guy's a madman. This is crazy. <laughs> and then what follows three seconds later? Bond runs into the edge of the bridge on like a moped and endos himself over. Yeah. I was like, he's even crazier. Yeah. That is the oh, desired result. So That's awesome. awesome. Yeah. Ola, Ola Rep- Rapace. Rapace. Yeah, he's good. That's the guy. That's yeah. Patrice. A stunt actor, no lines, but yeah. like really good at parkour. He yeah, amazing, Swedish though. actor. I don't know. I mean, did he even have lines? I don't think he did. Not really, Not really but he's no. a hell of a like. Oh crap! His guy. name's Patrice, but we that. hired a Swedish actor. Yeah. What were we doing? <laughs> All the little things too, where like Money Penny's like driving and Bond doesn't like, it and he just grabs the wheel and like whips it around for her. That yeah, scene that was, was interesting, interesting because yeah. he was already kind of dominating her, like ordering her around. Yeah, and then she doesn't take it, and uh, but I think it was but, characterization because that's sure. part. Of, that's an early indication that you know she's new in the field and this is like one of her first missions because he he gives her shit for breaking the mirror off like she's not in control and then she, her rebuttal is to break the other mirror off like she is in control mm-hmm. so they've got this dynamic she's not just gonna get pushed around but in the end bond just can't handle it and he does take yeah. the wheel so yeah kind of nice little setup there naomi harris i she's, liked her performance yeah she's good she was intriguing yep she has the kind of like uh intense gaze and i feel like the first time i saw it i didn't realize that that was gonna be many money penny so like mm. when it's at the end you yeah get for her, sure your last name it's like oh that's it's, cool yeah it's a good reveal yeah uh back to that esca- excavator thing yeah when he knocks the cars off and they come toward her oh, yeah. uh and, and she's just driving beside the train trying to keep up with it that was really really good writing because if they didn't if he didn't do that she would have just been driving boring there's no reason to cut back to her there's no yeah. Im- her, her point her what she's doing is done until right, the next yeah. interaction. But this found a way to like, oh, let's bring both these characters together again. Yeah. And bounce back between them. But it also is like their character dynamic too, where he's like a blunt instrument doing anything he can to get there and other people have to pick yeah. up his mess. Yeah, they have to deal with it. So I think like that's a good little bit of like, not just like making her relevant, but also telling the story. Yeah. yeah and they characterize M throughout this whole thing too. Like when Money Penny's like, well, they're, they're gone. They're on this train. And M's just like, well then, get after them. Yeah, what are yeah, you doing? Yeah. And that's the <laughs> second time where we realize, like, oh, she, these people, these extraordinary people, are just tools in her toolbox to get yep. the mission done. Right. Uh, yeah, I, I really appreciated the focus on M and her like strategy of uh, of how to deal with agents in this one. I, I heard people describe her as like a dual, like her and Bond as dual protagonists in this one, because mm. in many ways it is M's story as well. It's like I agree. Silva is her failure, <laughs> and he comes back to haunt her, and then she has to reckon with that and make a decision about. You know, if if MI six is going to change in order, to, in, like in 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 response to these things that these revelations, but um, yeah, I don't know if she's like super active in terms of that. Like she kind of just gets yanked around and like goes to the hearing and then gets dragged by Bond over here and blah blah blah. But but I, I appreciate, I really, I, I like that arc where where she's like the mother. Like the, in some in some cases in the movie, it's like very very explicit that mm-hmm. her agents view her as this like mother and he come like silva when he confronts her at the end he came there to kill her yeah. but he sees that she's hurt and he's like oh what have they done to you oh no you're hurt oh and he's like sad and it's like i loved that scene yeah. because i was like it's so conflicted like you can see how screwed up this guy is oh he's so fantastic well, let's just talk more about him i didn't like javier bardem okay Sh- you sh- shut I, your mouth. It was weird casting. No. So, like, so, so listen, 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 no, listen. listen. Wait, what? Because, no, hold on. Because you, on go, the page, you go last because sure, you're saying a negative first. thing. Fine. Uh, I thought it, one of the greatest character introductions ever. Sweet. I love how he starts so far yeah. away. and like then two just, minutes, single shot. Oh. Yeah. Okay, this, wait. But I have to clarify. I didn't like Javier Bardem for the role. I liked the character. But I liked I, I liked on the page I like it. What I liked was that he was it was a different Bardem than I've seen. I haven't seen him in a lot, uh, notably um, No Country for Old Men. Sure. But he was so much more delicate in this, and and then and so weird and complex, such a weird foil to Bond, um, especially when he like rubs his legs and stuff. That was Ooh, crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody was like, "Oh no, I'm not used to this in a Bond movie." <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? Where's and all then, the hot chicks? And then Bond implies that he's it's not his first rodeo. That was a bluff. That yeah, was I, a I don't think so. I think this this guy's tried some things. I mean, yeah. <laughs> James Bond. He's the for, first Bond that, that eats pussy, so. He, he gets the mission done. <laughs> whatever yeah. it takes. Um, David, what you, you had something to say about Silva? I think he might be one of the best Bond villains ever. Like mm. it's like hard to say that cuz there's always the the recency bias, but I think he's 
the most interesting in a lot of ways, but he's certainly the most closely tied to Bond. Yeah. And I like that he's like kind of a mere reflection, but like a warped version and how closely tied he is to M. And I think he's just like weird and wacky in the fun Bond way without being like uh, kitschy or like just being a novelty. He seemed mm. like a real person. It, like... I mean, in this world, I mean, he doesn't mm-hmm. seem like, oh, I have a giant scar on my face. Yeah. Billionaire going to go into space. Kind yeah. of, oh, kind yeah, of yeah. bizarreness. Although we did, he did Ooh, have uh, the requisite uh, disfigurement later. Yeah. We, we were That's revealed. one of my nitpicks, actually. We'll yeah. talk about that later. Yeah. But yeah. Well, another thing that just had to be, has has to be said is Javier Bardem is in Dune. It's, Ooh. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. And he's still Gar. Right. It's yeah, going to yeah, be yeah, yeah. awesome. Yeah. No, I'm so, I'm stoked for that. I think, okay, so... Okay, we'll let you go now. All right, all right. So, like, I love the character. I love the idea of, like, a fellow MI6 agent, like a kind of a proto-Bond who who was, like, thrown aside when it became convenient for M, and so that's, like, the, the crux of the of the conflict. But um, I think that from the, from, the, from the get-go, as soon as he's revealed, I'm like, I was thinking of, um, what's his name? Sean Bean is a 006 in Goldeneye. And I was like... This that would I, I would I would appreciate a a Bond uh, foil that is a lot more similar to Bond in his like mannerisms because I think that in a Bond movie you know he's the protagonist we want to learn more about Bond we want to learn more about like what makes James Bond James Bond and I think that having Javier Bardem play this character just draws more attention to Javier Bardem instead of like what the character represents. So the like the whole time it's also that this came out in t- 2012 they were riding on Javier Bardem's uh popularity following No Country for Old Men which came out in 2007 so like he got a bunch of roles basically off of that being like ooh he was so magnetic he was so cool in like No Country for Old Men so like let's get him as the Bond villain ooh and I I feel like I just saw <laughs> I just saw the marketing and I saw the the casting hmm. decision on that it, from from that uh, frame, I feel like maybe if you had no knowledge about what else was going on in the in the film world around that time, or if you hadn't seen Goldeneye, I don't know. I don't but know. I, I thought I thought it would just be so much cooler to have someone who's like, this guy could almost play Bond, you know. But I, I think that could be interesting. He we, could in Spain. <laughs> yeah. Sure. We've we've had that character a bunch of times. Like we have uh, what is it, Red Grant or whatever in uh, For Much with Love, or yeah, like Sean Bean in that one, or like even Renault. Uh, like we've had a lot of like very close to bonds, and so I right. like having this like totally weird off kilter version. And like he's been like totally off the rail for twenty years. So, like who knows how he's gone? I get that like you're right on like a, in a writing way. If he was closer to Bond, that might be like a neater thing. Yeah. But I think Javier Bardem brings so much charisma, and I think he does bring a magnetic performance where like while those also looking things, evil. Yeah, super evil. He definitely looks like, evil. Even like the rat story, like how like how he tells it, it's like. It's so it's magnetic, and you just yeah, like can't, awesome you monologue. can't stop listening. And like the way like he gives like that, <laughs> yeah, you're like yeah, oh yeah. god, why? Or, or or the little things like when uh, Bond is chasing him through the subway, and he thinks like you think that he thinks that he's gotten away from Bond, and he laughs and then goes towards the door, but really he knows that Bond is following him, and he wants him to follow him, and like. Right. Like on the first watch, I was like, okay, but on the second watch, I'm like, oh, he's a fucking master, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bond's like shooting at him while he's on the ladder. He's like, oh, hey, yeah, like, yeah, okay, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like how his his plot involves turning Bond against M in a way, like yeah. turning the mirror around on Bond and saying and trying to p- put some kind of like relationship between them. Like we are the rats mm-hmm. that survive. They're doing this to us. Don't mm-hmm. don't let them do this to you. Yeah, the writing is great in this movie. So good. Like uh, the dialogue as well. I wanted to bring this up when you said when you when you brought up the 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 scene where he meets Q in the art gallery and he at first that. the guy sits down and he's about to leave because he's like, "Who are you?" and then he's like, "The Bond or whatever." Yeah. And uh he's like, "I could do Q says I could do more uh damage than you could do in a year in the field sitting at home in my pajamas or something. Yeah, yeah before I even drink and my tea. And he's like, so why do you need field work? And he's like, well, we need, you know, need somebody to pull the trigger. And he's like, or not pull the trigger. It's hard to tell in your pajamas. And I'm like, ah, <laughs> okay. And then, the, and then they shake hands and yeah. I'm like, that's pretty good. That's a pretty good dialogue. I, I think this movie is exquisitely written when you look at it from the character driven side. And this mm. movie is maybe the only Bond movie that's totally character driven. The plot is, is kind of okay. Mm. And like when you really start to examine it closely, it's kind of like silly a little bit. Like it's, yes. it, it, it's, it's hard because this movie is so, like the characters and the writing are so good and so high quality, 
that when the other aspects are still Bondian, it kind of feels like, like a mismatch. Yeah, you kind like of need of them all yeah. to be in the same yeah. level of camp or something. Totally, totally. And it's not that it's bad. It's not that the plot's like horrible. Like I've seen a lot of videos being like, oh, like everything falls apart. It's all plot holes. And I'm like, I don't think so. Like there is explanations for a lot of this stuff. But it, I think that like you said it, it just feels a little mismatch compared to how classy and well thought out some of the other aspects are. You know mm. what what scene had really great writing is the um that kind of psychological evaluation that he did. Oh yes. When he says like Day said, wasted. wasted. Oh, I was, so good. That, and then what the, the final one was uh meeting over or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something that like was that. Just, it was great. Yeah. yeah, I think what what you were talking about there with the like uh, juxtaposition of the kind of like an analytical elements of the movie and the more campy, uh, what, do you, what do you call it, nostalgia bait yeah. sort of stuff. I think it, yeah, that's that's part of what rub, rubbed me the wrong way with this movie, especially when you know, like they, I actually I omitted this part from my from my synopsis. I was gonna do the whole th- thing with the classic car again, mm-hmm. where he gets his Aston Martin DB5. Where yep. That's what they used to drive to to Skyfall, and I'm like, you know, the he, he, <laughs> he's like, we got to switch cars. Because they're tracking this one, so that he takes the cover off of it, and the music is like or whatever, <laughs> yeah. and it shows the car, and I'm like, people, I guess some people feel something at this moment, but I'm like, it's a, it's a nice car. Like I knew that that was the classic Bond car, yeah. but like the nostalgia, I, I don't care about Bond on a deep level, you know. So I was just kind of like, ah. The, right. the nice one about that one is that you don't even have to go that far to appreciate it, because yes, that is the classic Bond movie, yeah. like car that's like Goldfinger. Um, but he also he won that one in Casino Royale. You see him win it, uh, mm. and so the, the, it's not like explicit. But the fan theory is that like that's the exact same car that he won in that poker game in Casino Royale that he uh. like he won it. So he's like, oh, I guess I'll ship it back to England. And it was nostalgia bait then. It was nostalgia bait <laughs> double to double dip. <laughs> ah, I, I don't disagree. Meta bait. Yeah. I to me it's it's all the stuff where when the 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 stakes of the movie are world domination, not world domination, but like they're like. Like all these agents are going to die. And then the scales keep kind of going back to being really personal. I like that on a character level and like drama level. Mm. But when it becomes like James Bond and M like ditching everything, every protection, every weapon, every other agent to go hide out in this like old mansion, it's just like a little silly. Felt yeah. a little weird. Yeah, it it's like a did. little silly. And, and I was like, who are these Who are these mercenary guys? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I've, I'm always asking during these movies, I'm like, how do these bad guys just get like armies of dudes just to go and die for them like i'm just so confused i'm like what they just say it's about free speech the people do it they'll do anything <laughs> people are trying to stop your right to do blah 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 no. yeah they don't just met these them. guys at airsoft <laughs> <laughs> anyways another to battle <laughs> another cool writing thing um there's like this montage where he's doing all the testing and at first, when I, at first when M was like, "You're gonna have to do all, all the tests," I'm like, "Really? You're gonna make us do like a tutorial mission, basically?" But it turned out to be so germane to the rest of the movie, like right. his injured shoulder and everything. I, and then during that montage, that's where they decided we're gonna put all the exposition here. We're gonna yeah. have a guy talk, 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 talk while Bond does all these chin ups. Oh, and by the way, we're gonna yeah. do a long shot of Craig doing these chin ups. He yeah. can really do that many pull ups. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. But then at the Looks same good. time, realizing that it's, it was almost like talking to the audience there where they were like, okay, we know that this has been a lot of exposition. Should we do this later? And he's like, yeah, let's. <laughs> and so it's, it's almost like Bond is tired of all the exposition there. Yeah. So then he takes a break and it's like, it also serves as an, ex- as an excuse for the script yeah. to stop doing it at that point. I was going to mention this earlier. I like when he, you're talking about his arc and how he's, you know, he's not the same after that. Um, but so he o- oscillates between being, you know, can I rise to the challenge again or not? And he digs that stuff out of his shoulder mm-hmm. And then after that, he is hanging by both arms. He's in his tuxedo. He's Bond. Oh, he's yeah. shaved. He's hanging by both arms from the elevator. And then his, he looks up at his right hand oh, and then his hand, yeah. it, it fails. Yep. Mm. And I just, that, that was the moment where I was like, oh, this is going to be with us. Yeah. Yeah. He's not just back to normal. That, yeah. This is what the movie's kind of yeah. about. But then by the time it gets to, now he's got to aim and shoot at this girl, yeah. or this woman, and uh, all, there's a, her life's on the line and all this. Did you feel like, uh, now it's kind of ham-fisted. Now it's like, well, what else can his shoulder not do? I think. Or though, do you think it, it was it was good? It Wait. works because the like I I buy it that Silva would want to play that game with him, and he knows like 
he's yeah he it's 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 him baiting him so it works within the story i think like if silva didn't have a way of knowing about this knowing evaluation, the score and i, I love on the test i love how him. neat that is that that you see silva like look at his evaluation and kind of like read him based off that because it's good at extra exposition but then right. it, it allows him to be way deeper in bond's mind i almost so I, I like it i i feel like uh, even if he was in peak condition, that would be kind of a weird, like a sketchy shot to well, make. With that like, gun, yeah, I don't <laughs> think I don't think Bond would be able to make that even at, p- at peak condition. So it was more like I, I read that more as like, um, he, he's just like torturing Bond. Basically. I also think that it's good visual storytelling in the sense of like, like, Heavy Bardem never intended for her to go, but like in terms of like their how what Heavy Bardem is trying to say or what Silva's trying to say is like, you're you're working so hard to get this thing off her head with precision and keep up with safe. But like my way is so much better. Just shoot her. And then the, the thing is gone. And like, that's how we should do everything. We should do it all by like killing people and getting what we need. Something exp- um, I don't know. Expedient. That's Expedient. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. okay. I actually didn't know until just now that he actually just shoots her. Yeah. He just shoots her. I thought he just like shot near her or something and she was scared and went, ah, and then it fell off her head and he's like, ha, yeah. ah, I win. No, he just but like, mm. he actually just shot her. Yeah. Eh? That was, Damn. that yeah. makes sense. Cause I was like, what happened to like the, where's that character's <laughs> outro? She just matters yeah. for like 25 minutes and then is just it's, gone. That's a definitely a, a character that I wish was a little bit more fleshed out because I think she's really interesting and I think her performance is insane when like oh, her yeah. fear that yeah. she shows at the casino because she's so like poison con- control and she's like, you don't know fear. I was like, oh, I get like the shivers. I'm like, I'm so glad you, like so good. I'm so glad you brought that up because that was a note I put down. I was like, yo, this actress is really she's good. So like good. I totally believe that she is like so afraid for her life but like putting on a front yeah there were just like these all these little tiny twitches and stuff in her face that was like oh man she was great (sighs) which is which is also why it's like such a shame that she was wasted on this role well and it's like the yeah the casino scene of hers is incredible she's in the movie for like 50 minutes even by the yacht it's just like oh yeah she exists to have sex with bond and then she exists to be killed for bond and it's like okay (sighs) but going back to that scene that was so amazing i actually had to give it to david i was sitting there like maybe David just knows something I don't because when we did the Tenet <laughs> review, I liked it. You shat on it. And then I watched this scene and I specifically thought, this one scene <laughs> just did in two minutes what Tenet took a half hour to do. Yeah. That whole subplot in Tenet where, spoilers for Tenet, where the, the woman in that movie has like, they, they talk about this like affair she had with the artist and then there's this painting and they're going to sell the painting oh, at, yeah. this, at this auction. And it's so confusing. It takes like three scenes. Yeah. They just did it so fast and in more compelling. Yep. Like, I'm more scared for this woman <laughs> than the so lady scary. in Tenet. Like, and then so I thought, well, David has seen this movie and more spy movies like it. Maybe that's why he doesn't like Tenet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like Tenet. I just, I love Skyfall. <laughs> I feel my rating is going to go up by the end of this, too. Oh, right. Like, the more you we gave talk it about 8. it, 8.4. Yeah. Th- that was kind of a buffered rating where I'm like, I got to like not be super excited, but I am super <laughs> excited about See, Skyfall. But, so, like, this Severin thing, though, is exactly why I I can't rate these Bond movies too high because they always include these weird... At, uh, like, you know, um, I, I, I alluded to it in the synopsis with the fact that, like, he meets this woman, he identifies that she's a sex slave, so then it's like, oh, okay, maybe this is, like, tying this into a real-world issue or something, you know? Like, we have something to say here, but then Just, what's his solution? He's like, I'm gonna free you and so she's like, oh, you can free me from this weird guy who's like taking advantage of me. All right, come on my yacht, you know, and like, we'll go get him. He sneaks onto her yacht and, and she's taking a shower. He just comes up behind her and he's like, what does he say? I don't remember what he says, but he says something like suave. And Is it's that like, a PP7 in so your this pocket? Girl was a, <laughs> this girl was a sex slave since she was like 13 nah, or something. And she's just going to be like, oh yeah, let's totally do it. Yeah, like that, no, she's probably traumatized yeah, as hell. Like I agree. you're coming that's like, into her that's shower. The bond baggage where it's like he has to be so sexy that everyone will, everyone wants him all the time. Yeah, yeah. it's just like kind of a myopic, like, kind of yeah. short sighted to be Same like, thing. hey, it's a Bond movie. He, it's kind of just like, it's it's. I, I want to use the word porn. It's like a you well, want to be him yeah. in all aspects, right? Yeah. He's yeah, alpha in all aspects. So it's like action he gets porn. Like basically two sex scenes in this movie <laughs> with two different women. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh man, and the and the first one too where. We find out he's alive. He's lying on his bed drinking beer while this the woman on, is on his side just kind of like playing with his chest and he's like not even looking at her. Yeah. Oh, like, actually, I was, there's three then. I was talking about the shaving scene with Money Penny. They don't, I have, don't, think, yeah. they don't have sex, but yeah. it's an intimate scene. That's another scene, though, but that I, really bothers me because I'm like, why? Why? So there's a few things. One of them is the Bond trope where Money Penny, there's always been like sexual tension, but it's like, the, yeah. you always wonder like, did they ever? But probably not. And I think that that scene represents that pretty well. But I agree that's in my nitpicks. 
why why does she shave him? Exactly. It, it works on a writing level because it's, it's like so contrived. him giving up like he's him being vulnerable to her even though she shot him. So it's like him showing that he trusts her again. So like uh, it works on that level, but in terms of like what real humans do, no. Yeah, exactly. That, I don't think that's what bothered yeah, me about come it. Come on, like, real <laughs> women around Daniel Craig, they <laughs> shave him. Uh, <laughs> please, they sir. They would kill to shave I'm him. I'm so pleased to meet you. Actually, Can I shave I'd you, please? Shave him. I, I also I rewatched Casino Royale fairly recently, and uh, I think he looks better in Skyfall, even though he's older, even though he's more ragged. Mm. I think he. There's looks a scene really where good. he looks haggard when he goes to M's house. Oh, I was oh, like, yeah. yikes. He's <laughs> Good at drunk acting. I was like, oh, that dude's hammered. I don't know if he was actually drunk, but like, yeah, I, I was like, ooh. Yeah. That's a skill. Yeah, yeah, I know. I saw a clip of like Casino Royale. He looks a lot better in this one for sure. Yeah. Which is he, weird because he's, he's so much old younger. and grizzled. Um, but, uh, do you guys see that say? clip that was going around of him like kind of on the final day of shooting, like kind of saying his goodbye to the crew? Of no. Shooting of Skyfall? No, of uh, no, no Time, time to, to Die, the new one. Yeah. It's beautiful. I like cried. What happened? What? He just like he's like talking about how grateful he is and like wait, on, this is on no time to die. Yeah, is that this is his a, last one. Yeah, that's his last one for sure. Because right. he's like fifty something now, and these movies are now much more action heavy. Like Roger Moore was pretty old. He was like 57, 58, no which way. in the seventies he only has to do like a somersault. Yeah, exactly. In the eighties, <laughs> that's like ninety five. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he he was never he was never a physical bond. But Daniel Craig has been a very physical bond, maybe the most physical bond. Yeah, but, no uh, kidding. But yeah, he looked. I, I mean, I, I, I said in the Casino Royale episode that he looked like a gorilla, a little bit, because he just like you know. Well, like, he literally runs through walls in that movie. Yeah, yeah, and exactly. Then he like, and, <laughs> <laughs> that's my favorite. And I like previous Bonds have been sort of tall. They're still muscular, but they're yeah. more lanky. Yeah. Daniel Craig comes in, and he's like squat and like like built. He's just like, yeah. oh man, this guy's gonna run through someone. Yeah, I or a I, wall. I think like yeah. all around on these Craig Bonds, they've done a really good job casting really good actors because like the chemistry they all have is incredible like even ray fiends he's awesome and like what do you mean even him he's amazing well like he, he they could have just like made him more of a throwaway thing he is incredible ray he's, fines? yeah ray mm. fines yeah sorry oh, yeah. No. um he's i wasn't fantastic. trying to correct you just... there's an awesome scene with a lot of subtlety in the there's so much subtlety in, in, in the dialogue yeah. in this movie man um there's this part where where m she's a i think the following scene is with q and so she does this little sentence that's like a tiny little info dump. It's a segue into being like, okay, next you're going to go and deal with Q. But she says it as like a defense mechanism because they're like grilling her on something mm. super personal. And then so she changes the subject and just kind of gets withdrawn and says, like, yeah, next you're going to go see Q. And it's just like, it's so efficient because we got the exposition that setting up the Q scene. Yeah. But we, but the, all the subtext is about the themes that they're actually talking yeah. about. There's just so much subtext well, in this yeah, movie. Even like the kind of a, not the same scene, but uh, when they're at the courthouse and M's getting grilled and you only get the last person starting to grill her. And then uh, like Mallory is just like, well, hold on. Why don't we let the wit like for why do <laughs> yeah. we have a change of thing and like let her speak. And like, that's like 10 seconds, but like you totally understood what just happened for the last yeah. 40 minutes in that courtroom. And you're like, Yep. I also the love sake of variety. Yeah, for the sake I thought of that variety. was like man, <laughs> yeah. English English is like such a better English. Yeah. <laughs> English English. English English good English. Uh I love Mallory in this he's movie. Awesome. I think that because when we first are introduced to him, we're kind of like, oh, he's this government guy yeah. who's trying to like rein in MI6. Yeah, 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 he's know. trying to take down M. No. Let us do our agent stuff, yeah. man. And by the you know, throughout the course of the movie, that's one of the, the the moments where we kind of see that there's more to him and that he's not just this kind of suit who's trying to control things. He actually does care and he wants what's best for everybody. And he throws and himself I, in front of M to protect yeah. her. And you're like, well, I've and, and it's almost he's like, been tortured before. Yeah. They say that, right? Right. And and uh there's the point, the one the the key part with him, I guess, in terms of like him kind of us welcoming him into the fold is uh when M and Bond are driving up and to Skyfall and they're leaving like a digital trail or whatever for Silva to follow. And oh, M yeah. uh, Mallory comes in and he's like, "What are we doing?" And the, and and Q and Tanner are like, "Oh wait, do we tell him?" And he's like, "Oh, you're doing this, aren't you?" And he's like, "Well, that's you know, what? To better not let the big boys find yeah, out." Yeah, and yeah. then he just he makes them himself part of their little niche in that or click in yeah. that in that moment. Yeah, and, and you're like. like there he is. Totally. But I like this guy now. He's kind of the bad guy. A few scenes earlier in another scene that has so much subtext, it's when it's M talking to Mallory and M is talking about how she's going to use her agents and Mallory's saying it's, you know, irresponsible or something like that. And then M says, as long as I'm head of this department, I'll choose my own operatives. Mm. And I, th I just thought that works on so many levels because just a few scenes before he was, he was telling her, you're going to be re forced retired. Right. 
in two months time, like you're just going to, you're going to transition and you're going to retire and you're going to get this award. And then now she's saying, as long as I'm head of the department, which you even said I yeah. get to do for the next like month or two, yeah. Yeah. then I'm going to act my way. So it's just like this little knife yeah. Just yeah, all yeah, underneath yeah. it all. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. It's and great. he he's kind of like skeptical about M's decision to put Bond back in the field, which I wanted, I was wondering about like, why do you think, like what was M's reasoning for uh, lying to Bond about the fact that he pa- oh, I think uh, didn't she, pass? The I think test. she, yeah, I I get why she would lie about it because she wants him to have the confidence in himself. Mm. She like maybe it was a bad choice, but I can see why she would make that gamble to be like he needs to believe that he can do this so that yeah. he can do it and like that's part of the like the half hitman half half monk combo is that that faith in yourself half half hitman half monk to kiss in a rail line yeah <laughs> is it um, true that. Or- is it explicitly stated that I know they talk about him not knowing his scores like he so do you think the movie is actually saying for a fact Bond thought he passed but he didn't yeah okay I think he did and I I, I think I just realized that like maybe a part of it is that M like part of her characterization is that she has these favorites Mm -hmm. these has she has these like favorite agents that she wants to work with you know and like Silva was one of these agents like M is not a traditional by the books sort of agency leader, right? Mm. And so that's part of the problem. That's part of the character flaw that and and strength that she's like has made mm and that we're dealing with in this movie. Um, and I I I do like that idea. It mm. kind of plays that you know that's why they think of her as more as like a a mother figure. And she says herself, she's like orphans make the best recruits. So like these. <laughs> These people that she's recruiting, they don't have anyone else to turn to. So, like, obviously, they're going to they're going to latch onto her. It's like, oh man, I'm just connecting all and these. I dots. think there's an element they're of- imprinting on her like ducks. Totally, totally. Yeah, and then she, but she's disapproving, right? What are you waiting for? Get after it. Yeah. You can never please her. She never says, yeah. "I'm proud of you." I also think there's an element <laughs> of uh, like where she's carrying guilt because she ordered like Money Penny to shoot Bond, mm. and so I think she all that's part of why she is giving him the go ahead is that she. Her, her deadly sin that she feels like she has to repay is a lack of faith in Bond. Yeah. And so she's now showing maybe too much faith in Bond and that's going to... Or maybe it's like her, her own her. defense mechanism is mm. like they they kind of see her in this maternal kind of role mm. and her defense mechanism is, is to not see them as children mm. herself. Instead, right. she always she thinks she tries to be guarded and think of them as tools in her toolbox. Right. But really, she, you have to admit to yourself, you love Bond. Yeah, yeah. no, it's true. I, I think believe, she does. Yeah. Not, I don't think I'm really reaching. I think that's kind of in the movie because doesn't Mallory say something like that to her later? Someone confronts M being like, you know, why are you using Bond? It's because you like Bond. Yeah. Well, and yeah. I think like that's one of the elements that's definitely been a through line of every Bond, but certainly Daniel Craig ones is the Junie Dench, Daniel Craig relationship. And like, you really do get the sense that they have years and years and years of close friendship. Uh, maybe not friendship, but well, close relationship. A, a relationship, yeah. yeah. <laughs> when she, you're certainly not sleeping here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean, See, that was that would be too far. I think that that's was her boundary. But that yeah. was interesting because I was kind of like, that's clearly drawing a line. Whereas I feel like the fact that he showed up in her apartment and she's like, you know, she's not batting an eyelid. It's it's it it indicates that there's a relationship there beyond just you know employee employer. But she she as you're saying, she's drawing a boundary, being like. Yeah, but okay, but don't get on any ideas. I don't love you. I do love you. But I don't <laughs> yeah. find a hotel. I, I can't decide whether her dying at the end was like kind of a cop out or whether it was like perfectly appropriate. Because in some ways, having her die doesn't actually mean that she has to confront truly what, what she's done here, you know? But on the other hand, maybe it's kind of appropriate that she dies because no one really perfectly ties up all the loose ends before, you know, they die. So I don't know. I, it, hmm. but maybe that's a pro in ter- for the movie. Cause now I'm thinking about it. That's true. Well, her whole goal in the movie is to accomplish the last mission before, before she retires. So but what's what the, last the last mission? mission? Well, uh, this, this problem at hand. Kill Silva? No, just kill Silva. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There, well, it's not really a mission. That's what's kind of different about this movie. I mean, again, haven't seen any of them, but I assume there's usually a mission. There's a mission, yeah. and this one, they're on defense the entire time. Right. It's it's Silva's mission, and it's he's taking the fight not only to their headquarters but also to his familial home. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah, that's definitely another interesting aspect they, of this. They're, they're, they're really... defending the house Home Alone style yeah. at the end. Yeah. It's defense all the way. I through. actually really like that. I know a lot of people. Are like, it's like just like Home Alone. I'm like. No, it's not. <laughs> what? Wait, who's <laughs> that's a that's a thing. People says this is, this movie is just no, like Home ending, Alone. The ending is just like Home Alone, and like that's like a knock against it. <laughs> but I'm like, Bardem really. gets hit in the face with a pain cat. <laughs> that'd be hilarious. Right, the schnoz. The, the hot hot I mean, iron. Just like, <laughs> ah! 
<laughs> any any Harry. movie that they involves down a house defending yeah, a agree. structure against in waves <laughs> yeah. of enemies. Anytime is home that's going to happen, yeah. You, you oh, there's always a montage setting up the traps. Yeah. There's always the fight. There's always the payoff. I feel like it would be Imagine. more Home Alone if there were like a few guys instead of like a whole squadrons. Yeah, yeah. yeah just henchmen. Why the hell are you dressed like a chicken? <laughs> <laughs> I, okay, I, wait. Lo- I love that sequence I think it's really oh, fun yeah. there's like a few moments where I'm like eh, like when uh, no, welcome to Scotland yeah I like that you like when, that or not like oh, that yeah, I like it I hate when the guys walk in and then they see uh, Kincaid and they shoot him but then it's like oh it's a mirror and then it goes to him and he like shoots them like that's all fine but it's the timing of it where it's so clearly for the audience it's like as soon as they don't they shoot at the mirror he would shoot them he wouldn't like wait for them to like Look at him, and so he could have his line. I didn't notice that. Oh, that that bothered. Yeah, I, I think that's because really I've seen it like either. fifteen times. But now that you oh, explain yeah. that, that is kind of Home Alone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I feel yeah, like he's an old man. He doesn't have the best sure. reflexes. It's, it doesn't matter. It's yeah. definitely a nitpick. Welcome to Scotland. Um, I like him. I think I he's fun. Kincaid. Apparently, there's a rumor. I don't even know if it's substantiated, but originally that role was they were hoping to get Sean Connery. Oh, that would have been very interesting. Uh, it would have pulled me out for sure. Yeah. You would be like, "There he is." <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't like that. Albert Finney, you're just like that's just because you. Yeah. It would f- confuse you because you wouldn't know. Like, wait, is this canon? Like, is that Bond? Bond? Yeah, like, yeah. What's Which happening? also, I want to, I want to talk about canon for a second. But, but yeah, Kincaid was great. I think I was like, it pulled me out a little bit when he was like. Oh hi, James. Haven't seen you since you were a tiny child, and now you're like late middle aged. Uh, what's like, up? That's just people from what the UK, you, man. What did you do for a living? Yeah. And then also <laughs> learning that they were about to be attacked by squads of uh, our, uh, you know, probably ex soldiers. And uh, oh, okay, yep. Let's yeah. go. Let's go. I believe it completely. <laughs> to me, it's like Alfred character, like an intergenerational servant to yeah, your family. Like that kind Alfred- of loyalty. I, I'm just gonna say that exists in the UK. But I yeah, when was the that. last time you seen James? That's, I think that's the part that was weird. It's like, yeah. okay, if you haven't seen him his entire life. Well, especially in the next movie too, it's like they talk about how James, like his parents died and he went to live with other people. So like, right. been even longer yeah. that Albert Finney's seen him. Like, I don't know. I, it doesn't matter. It's, I, you know. I do appreciate, like, I love those type of characters where, you know, a, a guy thinks that he's fully alone in the world, but like turns out, oh, there's this like tangential person. Like in Harry Potter, it's great when we hear all these characters talking about Harry's parents. Like, Harry's parents are gone, and Harry is, in many ways, alone in the world. Mm -hmm. But he has all these people that, like, tether him to this, like, uh, background of of relationships and stuff. And so, I like that in movies. But, um, yeah, it did kind of feel weird how he was like, well, okay, let's let's die. Although, he, I I did expect him to die, but he did not. That would have been too much. Too many old people dying. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Who's going to defend James Bond's kids 30 years from now? <laughs> He'll be back. <laughs> back okay, to fight guard the house, yeah. but don't make it look good. Make it look abandoned and when, weird. When you guys compare this to Casino Royale, do you feel like this one is like more grounded in our world? Because like this one to me, like even the fact that there's like a terrorist attack in London, two different terrorist attacks in London, I'm like, it feels much more, it's still like heightened Bond crazy reality, yeah. but it feels like it's connected to our world in a way that I really appreciate. Well, but I did. The Casino Royale is more like, I'm in a supercar now. Now I'm on a yacht. Now I'm on this yeah. location. I'm across the world. I'm yeah, over casinos. here. Casinos. Yeah. yeah. I'm, pl- I did, I'm playing cards with billionaires. I, I did <laughs> sort of, I did sort of feel like this one was a bit more grounded in our world, which is why those juxtapositions that we talked about earlier were a little jarring. But, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah, like the terrorist attack and stuff, um, referencing the sex trade. Um, he gets a gadget for the first time, but what is the gadget? It's a radio beacon, which is a thing. And a, uh, pistol with palm prints, which, which is, is a thing. thing. Uh, so yeah, no, I, 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 and I appreciate that. That's what I want Bond to be like. But then again, he he jumps off a Komodo dragon. Yeah, it's a little <laughs> bit silly. Yeah. What is that? Yeah, there's that. Although those guys are sturdy brick shit houses. You could totally do yeah. that. that. What do you guys think of that scene? Best th- alley oop lizard yeah. on the planet. Yeah. I think it was it was funny, and it's a good callback to. There's like a Roger Moore movie where there's a Komodo dragon or like oh, yeah. some kind of big lizard, but. Uh, when he's flipped upside down by the guy and he like has the look and he's like, whoa, huh, huh, duh. That was pretty cheesy. <laughs> it was like, whoa, this is, whoa. yeah, I've never seen Daniel Craig be like this. Watch out for the lizard. Yeah. Um, okay, wait, Canon. Where is this in the timeline? Because, because so Casino Royale is supposed to be sort of like a Batman Begins reboot, yeah. right? That's his first mission or whatever. So the, the theory. As 007. The theory is that it's Casino Royale, Quantum of Solace, and then. And then a bunch of start, stuff. Start at the beginning and then uh, Skyfall. Wait, mm-hmm. when you say start at the beginning, you mean all the mean, movies with all, other actors? Yeah. So it's like, because like there's a there's a fan theory that it's 
they're all different James Bonds. Like that's just a code name. But like, no, it's not. James Bond is the same person, it's just be. P- portrayed by different actors. Even though Q, uh, the the one of the 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 Q that played Q the most, he played it for like sixty Bernard, movies or something. Bernard, no, I think it's like Cleese. Lewin something Lewin, Emmett Lewin or something. Oh, Bernard Lee's M. Uh, whatever we know what you're talking whatever about. the guy who's who, who hands it off to john cleese he, yes yes, yes that guy sad he was moment. in like 15 movies yep. or something it's like he ages going from like sort of just middle age to Look, being like that's old the, decrepit that's the only inconsistency <laughs> in the bond timeline let's be real yeah um but yeah so that's the theory is it's casino royale's quantum of souls because quantum of souls starts like five minutes after casino royale uh, and then, yeah, you go back to Dr. No and then go, you go through all of them and then you do Skyfall. Oh, Spectre. I see. So is that why <laughs> Inspector, who's the bad guy Inspector? Uh, Blofeld. Blofeld. But that's why it doesn't make sense because Blofeld already exists in other ones. Yeah. And so they're reintroducing Blofeld as like a new villain. Oh. Uh, and But they've also retconned him to be his, like spoilers for Spectre. <laughs> Uh, to be his brother, like his stepbrother. What? Yeah, it's so stupid. I saw Spectre, but I just, yeah, I feel yeah. like I see these movies and it goes in, in, in one ear and out the other. Spectre was so bad. <laughs> you have a scar on your face too? Do we just <laughs> become best friends? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so much room for evil activities. Wait, yeah. step? Okay, let's not get into that. That's, uh, okay, so this is, Skyfall is like, that's why it makes, because I think I remember being confused where I'm like, wait, but this is only the third Daniel Craig movie and there was a reset in the first one. So why is he like an old guy who's had a million adventures? Or yeah. It's only the third movie, but it's because they're basically being, yeah, yeah there's, there's all like these a, movies in, in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's fine, I guess. Yeah, I had a moment at the beginning of this movie in the like the opening action sequence with um, where they're chasing the, the guy whose name starts with P. And, Patrice. Uh, where I like suddenly got it, where I suddenly like understood Bond. Mm. Because since watching Casino Royale, I've just, I've watched like a lot of Marvel movies and I was like, oh, the action has just such a like a visceralness to it like a, a high quality and a level of realism that was like this is the peak like this is so sweet mm. i guess the only thing that comes close to that is maybe mission impossible oh it sure does yeah. it's different though it's they they have a different appeal but it mission impossible is definitely the american counterpart to james bond right um and in some ways is better i would say Really? I would I would admit. Is there more to like dig into intellectually in in Mission Impossible? Uh <laughs> like mildly, probably not more than Skyfall though. Like it's uh, at most around that level. It's about of, like it's interesting like, ideas. It's like comparing a cheeseburger to tea and crumpets. Sure, yeah. They're great. both they're both not really great for you, but they'll give you something. Yeah, and you enjoy them. Hmm. A little snack. Yeah. Dirty dench eating a cheeseburger. But you can make a healthy cheeseburger. Then, but then it's not James. That's Bond. all I want from James Bond is a health. It's a cheeseburger. Yeah, but it's healthy. There's but, some onions in there. There's some. There's some veggies. Go eat a salad at a different meal. They appear to be on the rooftops of the Grand Bazaar. No. <laughs> I just want to appreciate. Yeah, what? like we what go through this whole movie. From? I just have it written down because it's like how they see themselves with the humor. It's like it's so tongue in cheek, right? Like there, there's gonna be a chase on the rooftops of the Grand Bazaar, and. They have to say it out loud, like they have to own <laughs> it. He has to be on the room of the ground below. But it's so cool with the motorcycle. Like that's yeah, really, it was, really it was awesome. Cool. But I'm like, what are they saying when it's like, he? How is when he delivers that line to whoever he's saying that to on the radio? Is it Tanner? It, it's simultaneously like it's a thing, but it's not a thing. Like of course he is. Yeah, I feel like that's that's one of the positive aspects of Bond that I think I I do enjoy the fact that this British sensibility is one of tra- that has traditionally been sort of like proper and prim and proper, and especially if you're the Her Majesty's Secret Service. Well, you're going to be an upstanding gentleman, aren't you? And so then Bond goes out there and he's like tearing shit up and going crazy. And it's like a juxtaposition to the fact that he's this classy agent and he'll show up at a, at an exclusive casino and like seduce a woman, uh, but then go and like explode a boat. Afterwards, yeah. and it's like, well, I suppose you did have to do that, didn't you? <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Hit picks, hit picks. Uh, hit picks. I mean, all the scenes have incredible shots, like the Shanghai fight, like that silhouette fight. Oh yeah, incredible. We didn't even talk about that. So I cool. mean, we we kind of like got uh, we got off on a tangent when we were talking about yeah. the imagery, but like, yeah, when that yeah. happened, I but even like, the build up oh. to it, where it's like, it's it's all the reflections, and he's kind of like hiding in the reflections. Yeah, but it co- it's interesting because it comes back thematically later in a weird way, and I, I, this might be a bit of a reach, but but bear with <laughs> me. Where there's the talk later about how, like when they're in the, the 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 hearing, all this added transparency actually only creates more places to hide. Where like it's people, there's like more shadows created by it, 
And I almost mm. think that there might be an intentional visual of when he's looking at the the assassin, like they could have had it just be like an empty space or whatever, but there's all these levels of transparency. There's all these glass mm. and all the reflections create these places for Bond to hide. And I think they're like, it's a little bit of a reach, but I'm like, there might be an idea, like a visual representation of that where the transparency creates places for him to hide. And he, Yeah, he, I can he, see why you think that's a reach. I also can see a world where, you know, you're you're a DP and you're trying to look, what, what do I want to bring to this movie? And you want to know in broad strokes the themes of the movie and try yeah. to p- put, you know, trickle them into your job. Yeah. So I, I could see it happening. Yeah. But it's uh, even beyond if it is thematic or not, it's a beautiful sequence. Oh, like yeah. The whole build up to it, all the lights, the way when he first gets off the elevator, like the light going by and it's changing. You're like, oh, what's this lighting? Yeah. yeah. And it's so it's also like obscurity. Like you don't it's harder to know what's going on. Yeah. So it makes this one on one kind of fight sequence is so much more intriguing yeah i'll so say I, I feel like it's probably the most likely scenario is that that is not intentional but at the same time it's art yeah you can make that connection and exactly. and it means something yeah. i mean i think it works regardless yeah. so. and i think skyfall to me is like the one bond movie that i would qualify as like it could be art yeah <laughs> yeah and i also i, I just want to say about the parliamentary inquiry thing too i kind of liked m's like rebuttal of the fact that like Hey, that's old fashioned. You know, we don't need to work in the shadows anymore. Everyone's got the internet. Like, <laughs> you know, uh, that's old fashioned and stuff. And she's like, "Yo, there are more shadows now than anywhere. Yeah, than than any time before." Yeah, uh, I liked her kind of. Yeah. yeah, so good. Have you been on the dark web, baby? Although <laughs> Silk Road, one of my nitpicks is is the the like super simplification of like hacking yeah like oh it's amazing what you can do with a computer these days and no. oh uh, you just one man and a click a button and a island is abandoned it's yeah. like well or, yeah or even <laughs> just like oh it's hexadecimal the hexadecimal code and it's just like lines being like yeah yeah it's yeah. like this is not what hacking looks like and other yeah. times it was good though like there's a, a throwaway line where that director guy works beside m uh he's Tanner. like he's like scrape the headers like find out what it is oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, right this seems- uh, in my limited knowledge, like that actually makes sense. Like, right? You know, you got these envelopes of Ethernet packets. They have, uh, they have connections at the top. That connection described by the header at the top. So I guess if you scrape that, you could find the IP address. Like, okay, yeah. that kind of makes sense. Um, Although then- now I'm gonna get lit up in the comments. Yeah, so I'm like, that's people- like, <laughs> oh, oh sure, yeah. I was I was no. gonna say that we do have that like big visual when Q is trying to hack. Uh, oh, Silva's this is laptop. one of my nitpicks. <laughs> it's like a big 3D representation yeah. of like constantly shifting yeah, around yeah, points yeah. on a thing. It's like that's not what it looks yeah. like. And then the ever. not the not t- tech guy in the yeah. room is like, <laughs> look at that thing. There's the answer. I'm Bond. Fuck that's you. the name of a train station. Try to use that as a key. <laughs> oh, it's a map. <laughs> yeah, that was lame. I didn't like that. Yeah. Hit uh, pick, watching MI6 blow up, that was like really oh, believable to me. I shocking. was like, yeah, it was like, whoa. Yeah, I mean, yeah. like, that's the first time I saw it. Another <laughs> loud noise out of nowhere. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that got was trouble shocking. for that one. Yeah. <laughs> shocking for you the first time you're like, oh, MI6 yeah. can't be blown up. Well, yeah, I saw this. They can't movie. do that to the headquarters. I just remember the, the ride I went on the first time I saw this in theaters. Like, I went in a suit with one of my friends that also loved James Bond. We just it was like yes, oh mouth and yes. gate. Yes, <laughs> I also gate. have embarrassing dress yeah. up and go to movies things. Yeah. That's so oh, good. Yeah, I'm not alone. Yeah, yeah, I'm not telling you minor. <laughs> well, when we do the sequel to it, we'll, we'll have to. We'll have, you'll have to tell us. I dressed up for Star Wars, Revenge Ooh, of the that's Sith. That's the worst one. And my friend wore a zebra, like a child's yeah. zebra onesie. Yeah. Because he was like, I'm a Wookie. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. Where were you? I was just Jedi, yeah. like wearing Jedi robes. Yeah, yeah. I remember. And then my friend had a lightsaber coat. fight with somebody <laughs> yeah. down at the front. Ah, like, that's awesome. It's awesome. I got into a fight with my dad because I had a soccer tournament the next day after it came out, and I like begged him. I think I, I don't know if I cried, but got very close, being like, "You don't understand. Like, there'll never be another Star Wars movie. I have to see it like, <laughs> for opening night." He's and he was like, one. "He's like, there'll be another one." And I was like, "You don't know, Dad." Yeah. And he, was, he was right, <laughs> and they he, will be. Bad. Oh, he lived it. He lived it. Here's a nitpick, kind of. When he's digging the bullets out in the mirror with a knife, I'm like. Dude, let's go to the doctor. <laughs> yeah. I'm a badass. Like what? Well, but then I kind of imagined I'm like I'm picturing Bond. He's in the waiting room of the hospital. It takes forever. He gets in there. Doctor operates. I'm like, we can't have that. No, but it's also he, like MI6. So he can go to see like a specialist. Someone could have came to his room, yeah. right? And For he, sure. He could have just unflinchingly had them yeah. removed. It just would have been I less I feel like tacky. there are a number of medical things in this movie that kind of bother me. Like how was he shot twice in the chest and was just fine? When? Oh, like he got shot in the chest once by yeah. Patrice. Yeah. And, who, by the way, how many magazines does this guy have for his pistol? He's just oh, unloading just, constantly. 
You just can't pay attention. That's to that. just mercenary but stuff. But do you see how big his drum magazine was? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. One of the guns. But then after that, he just like kept going. Oh, okay. It's like his whole jacket's full of magazines. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, uh, so he got shot in the chest there, and then he gets shot by Money Penny. He gets yeah. falls a million feet down into the river. How is he still alive? We how about that fall though? Yeah. <laughs> okay, oh, into water. I like to think that he didn't get shot. He just was like, oh, it's my chance. <laughs> 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 yeah, I wish uh, I wish there were yeah. some answers there. My, my nitpick tied to that is like, what kind of stupid ass fucking assassin uses a traceable bullet? Like, why is Patrice using a bullet that only three people on the planet are are using? This and is it's a hell of a bullet. Yeah, yeah. Wh- yeah they never, and it's they it's ever... a very Bond thing. Like, there's a whole movie about the man with a golden gun who shoots golden bullets. Like, that's very stupid. It's very Bond, but like, Ego, in the, again, man. again, the the juxtaposition with like the really good grounded stuff in this movie, it just feels silly. But what was it? What was the deal with it? It was depleted uranium, and what's the deal? It like shatters it's better. Entangled. Uh, it's, or wait, what? Inverted. <laughs> it's <laughs> it <tenet> again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, here's a nitpick. That face effect doesn't make any sense. The, Oof. Bardem's yeah. character takes his dentures out. Apparently, it has like a kind of stent in it that's propping up the structure of his cheek, like his mm. orbital bone. Yeah. That's all cool. But then for some reason, there's like this weird shadowy, like now his complexion's awful. Yeah, in the that striation spot. or whatever. Yeah, and then yeah. he puts it back in. Like, now he's beautiful. It's yeah. just like, what? It's 2012. It yeah. It's 2012. They didn't have the Avengers... Face y- making you young again. I, I remember in 2012 technology. it not looking great, being like. Yeah. But it's also just nonsensical. Like, wh- why would it just mean? disappear? It no, it just what do you mean? It's like sags his face down a little. It's bit. not that, just that. It looks like it has, like you say, striations that yeah, would be like, like the skin is like like weird. scars yeah. tissue. It's like stretch marks. But then it unstretches. Unstretches. Yeah, marks? they kind of like disappear when they are uh, when it's made taut again. I can't su- suspend my disbelief as far as you. Fine. Really. Um, Vio laptops. Everyone. Oh yeah. Sony Vio. This isn't as bad as some of the other Bond movies. In 2012. Uh, I think Casino Royale is the worst with like the Blu-ray when he like holds up the Blu-ray to the camera and then puts it in. It's like... (laughs) Well, okay. So this isn't really like a hit pick or a nitpick. It's just like something I noticed because it's 2012 and now Sony doesn't make Vio laptops anymore. Are they still made? Because they sold off the brand. Yeah. Vio got spun off into something or they, somebody bought them, but Mm. I haven't heard about a Vio laptop in a while. So Ericsson, Ericsson phone's still a thing. Probably not. I think they just make like 5G tech. Yuck. Yeah. Yo. Yuck. The underwater leg hold. So oh he, yeah. He's on the ice. He goes down with the with the with the goon, yeah. and he, he beats him by putting his leg in this hold that look does not look. Believable. I love holds and <laughs> jujitsu movies. Neck. The problem is, yeah, that's the problem <clears throat> is that the like sur- different surface of his leg, back of the calf and back of the hamstring, are not in contact with the two carotids. Oh. It's totally shifted like 90s. So there's just. You're just not going to pass out. Okay. Just, it just wouldn't work. Yeah. I like that sequence. So I love before, too. The shots are so stunning when he's like running away from the fire. And it's just like blackness, but fire. And like he's just a little silhouette. That is like the most beautiful fire shot I've ever seen mm-hmm. in a movie ever. Pretty dark fire uh, shot. sequence. Yeah. And I actually had some. I have Philips Hue in my living room and I had them on like dimmed. And then I was like, I need to actually just turn this off. It, this movie w- made me want to have a dedicated home theater, not because the sound was awesome yeah. and also very abrupt, but also because. I wish I had to like control complete light control because yeah. even after I turned out all the lights, I still had like window oh, ambient yeah. city light and stuff, yeah. and it really would have been a better HDR experience yeah. had I had light control. Every Roger Zekins man is a is a full bla- blackout movie for me. Like, there's lots of movies that I I'll leave like a window half open, but like anything that Roger Deakins shoots, I'm just like everything has to be black. Oh dang, so good. Do you have like a really nice uh, OLED TV or something? No, I have LCD. Oh. but I still want it black. His full array local dimming. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Is it quantum? Okay, last thing I want to say about Silva, <laughs> it would be really cool to have him be like a hacker guy before he left. But the implication is that he's just Bond. No, he was a hacker guy. He, they talk. When about do they was, say that? Uh, he was hacking the Hong Kong or like the Chinese government. That's why she gave him up. It was that he was getting ahead and he was like doing all these illicit hacking things to get. Information. That's why she gave them. He's to them. faster Fine. moving just, than their their archaic yeah. I just feel organization. Like, th- okay, fair enough. I miss that, and it's I feel like line. I feel like because him hacking stuff is like such an integral part of the plot, and it's also like a thematic element mm-hmm. because it's like, oh, times have changed. It's not all about punching and shooting. It's now about computer stuff. Mm-hmm. Like I think it would have been that's a missed opportunity to make him sort of like M's top hacker guy you know and like oh he's legendary because he yeah. did this and everyone heard about it you know and so that's why he's this like yeah. formidable force out there instead of just i was bond and then i got tortured and then i learned how to hack afterwards well i think it's it's interesting because like 
the movie says that he's Bond's counterpart, but like you don't really ever see him match Bond on a physical level. Like right. he, he's outsmarting him at every turn. Yeah, and like that that's really interesting and really good. But it, you don't get. I don't really get the sense that they're like mirrored. I think like maybe like maybe one day once he used to be mirrored, but now he's so different. But I, the I, game for a long I feel time. Like yeah, maybe, that's fair. I feel like that's a missed opportunity. Like I, he I wouldn't agree. he wouldn't match Bond. You know, yeah. if he was this hacker guy, it's more that like Bond is trying to get at him, and he's like using these like tricks to get him. Like yeah. there's a bit of that where he like drops the train on him and stuff. But I just that I, was I feel sick. like there are yeah. some missed opportunities where it could have been tighter. It could have been more impactful. But yeah. instead, I was kind of like watching it, and I was engaged in my mind. Uh, and my heart a little bit, but uh, you know. Yeah. Oh, another nitpick, another IT nitpick is when they're like, "It's security through obscurity," and they're like, "Whoa!" Like that's that that's, rhymes. That's a bad thing. That's a thing in in security. Right. You don't want that. It yeah. basically means like, and this is actually kind of a deeper flaw. It seems because the thing, what that means is, um, it's secure. Like this is a, a security measure only because you don't know we're using it, and right. if you knew we were using uh, it, you'd be able to bypass it. Yep. That's what mm-hmm. you don't want. Yep. And it kind of implies that that's what Silva does. He used to work here, therefore he knows how to take us down. It's like, yeah. no, he shouldn't. Yeah, he right. should be able to know exactly what you're using, but still can't crack it. Yeah. Mm. Okay, last one. I want to. Last thing I want to address before before we end the episode. Next one. No time for no time to die. Right. Ooh. Yeah, baby. When is that coming out? October eighth. We're gonna do. We're gonna do a arrival and then that. Oh, and I could not care less until I watch Skyfall. Nice. Now I'm stoked, man. Thank, yeah. thank you, David. Yeah. Well, because this is going to be the end of the Daniel Craig Final one. run, right? I think I think what, this is going to be a good one. What is going to happen? What do you think? Uh, is, is 007 going to be a girl now? Maybe. I, I think James Bond retires or dies. Yeah. I don't. I don't want to make predictions, but my guess, based on what I've heard, is that intersectionality. It starts. It starts with him not being 007. It starts with the other agent being 007, and then he might take that role back oh. by the end. Oh, or right. like completely handed off, but she is 007. I he's James Bond. I she's think, 007. I think originally I was on the side of like, okay, don't make James Bond a, a woman. Like, don't be like, okay, we're making a James Bond movie, but now it's what's Jane, the, what's Jamie, Bond. Jane Bond. Yeah, Jamie. Ooh. Okay, yeah. Jane's good. Like, yeah. don't do that. Instead, have James Bond retire because he's 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 had a good run. Very- and let's have 007 because these agents, you know, these titles are just yep. titles that any agent can have. Now let's have 007 be a woman. But now I'm kind of like, I don't know. I feel like that would also feel weird. It would also feel like we're just kind of like trying to shoehorn a woman in there. Um, I think I think they're not sure what they're gonna do. I think they're gonna. F- Feel it out based on this And the one. movie's coming out in a couple weeks. Well, they I don't think, even know. I, I think <laughs> that they'll leave the door. My guess is by the end of the movie, they'll leave it open that the actor that's portraying 007 could continue being 007 or in the next movie. They'll oh, just, so they'll whatever the audience reception, reception is. I think, that, I think that's what their plan is. It didn't mm. work, guys. Get like Keith Stanfield. <laughs> <laughs> well, Idris Elba used to be the f- One the step at a favorite. time. Yeah, Idris Elba would have been cool, but, but I think he's, he's too old, old now. I agree. So. Uh, Henry Cavill was their first choice. You think Lakeith Stanfield's too old? No, no, no. no. I just I just Elba. Oh, okay. they could. I was joking with Lakeith Stanfield. He's too like gangly, I guess. Although he's a good actor, but yeah. they could use the dude from Tenet, uh, Denzel's son. I thought oh, he be, was, yeah, I good. thought he was good. He's yeah. a, he's kind of a they've mad. Never, lit. They've never had a non UK person. Like they've had every, mm, all yeah. represented it's be a Scottish, guy. Irish, uh, Welsh. Like they've had everybody. Even yeah. Australian. They have an Australian guy one time. Uh, what about uh, Daniel o- Olulu? Or I can't say his last name. The guy from Get Out. He's good. He's English. Oh, I don't really like. He's not physical enough. No, I Kaluuya. think he could. Kaluuya. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. he right. could. I don't know. Like, there's no one that like immediately. I'm like, oh, that person. It, uh, Michael Fassbender was one that I was like, yeah, he'd be a good, good heady yeah. Bond. Um, eh. What about a spinoff like the Born thing did? Like they did. Don't uh, do anything with Jeremy Renner. Well, that's what I think. I think like <laughs> well, they've, they've kind Renner, of ignored yeah. the like double O mythos for a while. Like, when was the last time we had another double O agent? Uh, and then right. kind of, I used to love that when it was like, oh, that's 006. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Cool. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah, that's yeah, cool. Yeah. It's like a whole other series of 25 movies we never got to see, but we could. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. And so I, I hope that they do a little bit of that in this one or like moving forward, they like. And do it turns something. out all the other 00 agents hate Bond. <laughs> Yeah. He's like he's so obnoxious. That's yeah. Archer, basically. Yeah, he yeah, sleeps yeah. with every one of our contacts. Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> Stop Can you it! Imagine? Can you imagine being double six and, and like meeting like a, a very attractive woman on a beach or on a yacht somewhere? You just have to be like, hey, fuck Bond. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I have to know. Uh, okay, fine. Yeah, yeah. Pass. I'll pass. Yeah. I want to. I want to address been here. that uh, that blowing up the subway sequence because I I I agree with you. I really love it, but there's a lot of people like it makes no sense. It's like. How would he know where to, that jump bond would be there? How do you know the timing of it? How do this? It's because he was audience. This is for you. You guys, you guys didn't mind it. It's because 
Silva led him there. He, the whole point was to get Bond in that spot to blow it up for him. It's not like random chance. Silva, this whole chase was orchestrated right. just to get Bond there so he could blow it up. Be like, haha, you're smart line. I said smart <laughs> you. <laughs> Radio. <laughs> And so, smart line here, me, smart line there. Yeah, yeah. that baby. To me, that doesn't really bother me. Like, and if it bothers you, it's like, hey, that's just a bond thing, man. Yeah, this is no, I, I didn't think about it too much. How do you trap a rat <laughs> with a train? <laughs> Drop a train yeah. on it. Yeah, adios. <laughs> this is not a good that, accent <laughs> any yeah. of us are doing. I love, I, I love know. that. That the end of that, like, but like you return it to the wild, but then it doesn't eat coconuts. Yeah, <laughs> you've changed its it nature. It only eats yeah, rats. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's a hell of a monologue. It's so good. good. Okay, we've gone on far too long here. I'm going gonna, gonna to raise my rating. I'll give it a nine. I'll give it a nine. I'll, go, also, I'll go all the way What up. was that, a plus 0.5? A nine plus point, out of 10? Point six. Yeah, I'm going all the way to nine. Oh, God. This is as good as action movies get. This is the best looking action movie. It's a very smart, smartly written action movie. It's got its flaws, but the characters are great. And so I'll go all the way to a nine. So it's now equal to Casino Royale? It's equal to Casino Royale. Okay. Let's go. I would do that if I thought the last quarter was as strong as the first half. That's fair. That's fair. I was going to go like 8.5. Okay, fine. 8.9. 8.9. You can do whatever you want. I'm doing. I'm doing. A, I'm doing an eight. Oh yeah, going from seven point five to eight. Because, Put it there, pal. Oh, I yeah. Realize, what I was realize, that? <laughs> slap it so the audience can hear. No, it. it's germs. Uh, <laughs> I'm talking. <laughs> I tried to get a I high realize, five from my. I realize now that I wasn't in the best mood when I went to watch this movie because it was like homework. I was like, oh, I have to watch this before we do the podcast tomorrow, and then we didn't even do the podcast yesterday. I'm sorry, Riley. And so I'm Demerit realizing for now, that. <laughs> <laughs> it's an eight out of ten. It's a great. It's, I would say it's probably the best Bond it's movie in my opinion. There. You know, it's I wanted to be a hater and be like, he didn't like Kill Bill. You know what? I'm going to give a second. Four point two zero. Oh my gosh! But it's maybe six point nine. But no, I love you guys. Aww. And that's what I base my ratings on. <laughs> so what, what the you power give? of friendship. What do you give it? Eight point two five. Yeah, I'm. I'm just saying. You bumped it up? No, no. He... Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I need this in writing. Eight point three three repeating, of course. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, yeah. There we go. There we go. Good movie. Well, well, what about next week? Arrival. It's another great movie. Arrival. Or is it? Uh, Spoiler. I wonder if it. It was amazing the first watch. I don't know if it's going to be like way less amazing on a repeat watch, but I'm willing to try. I uh, watched parts of it re somewhat recently, uh, well, to, to distract my child, and I was like, "To distract your child, you showed them Arrival." Yeah, his kid liked weird movies. My kid, apparently, my kid's favorite. Well, I, he's he's one. I don't know what like what his favorite movie is going to be, but like the movie that we put on to to pacify him a lot of the time is Grand, Grand Budapest yeah, Hotel. Okay. But that one I get. Like, yeah. I, I, if I was a kid, I like that. It's bright colors. But I started, Arrival. I started playing Ad Astra the other day because I've never seen that. How was it? I don't know. I only watched like the first two minutes and he fell asleep. You're like, nice. Oh, I got a little farther than him, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is so, way it. too long of a hey, podcast. Hey, guys, we have new handles now. At TGM pod on Twitter. Mm. The Which Jesus hello. For the Jesus man. <laughs> <laughs> and you can email Jesus us. Jesus man. <laughs> hello at they're just movies dot com. Oh. They're just movies. No big deal. Dot com. Love you. Later. Not even a dust.